Finals SAQ18, Awake Fiber Optic Intubation A. Which nerves supply sensation to the nasal air passages, the oropharynx and the larynx? Nasal air passages are supplied by the ophthalmic and maxillary divisions of the trigeminal nerve. The anterior septum and nares are supplied by the anterior ismoidal nerve, a branch of V1. The posterior nose, soft and hard palate are supplied by the nasal palatine, greater and lesser palatine nerves, which are branches of V2. Anterior two-thirds of the tongue is supplied by V3, mandibular division of cranial nerve 5. Posterior one-third of the tongue, soft palate, tonsils, root of pharynx and upper epiglottis are supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve, cranial nerve 9. The larynx is supplied by the vagus nerve. The underside of the epiglottis, area between the epiglottis to vocal cords are supplied by the internal laryngeal branch of the superior laryngeal nerve. Below the vocal cords and the trachea are supplied by the recurrent laryngeal nerve, both of which are branches of the vagus nerve. B. Outline the techniques for achieving local anesthesia in these areas. Several techniques are available to anesthetize the nose. The first is to nebulize the airway with 2% lidocaine. For example, 3 cc for 5 minutes, 60 mg. Disadvantages. If too much lidocaine is used, it is easy to exceed maximum LA dose. It does not work well for the larynx. Nebulization of the airway with lidocaine requires the patient to take good breaths, which is often not possible in patients requiring awake intubation. Second technique is nasal packing with ribbon gauze soaked in cocaine 4%. Use of cocaine may cause severe vessel constriction and necrosis of the mucosa. Alternatively, use lidocaine and adrenaline. The third technique is nasal spray with lidocaine 10%. One spray equals 10 mg of lidocaine or 0.1 ml. Alternative is co-phenylcaine spray. Co-phenylcaine is a combination of lidocaine and phenylephrine. The fourth technique is to place two cotton tips soaked in cocaine 4%, one on the floor of the nasal cavity, and one more angled slightly upwards to block the sphenopalatine ganglion. They should be left for no more than 5 minutes. Alternative is lidocaine and adrenaline. Techniques to anesthetize the oropharynx, larynx, and hypopharynx. Spray as you go technique or nerve blocks. For spray as you go, cofinalcane mucosal atomization device to the nostrils, 1% lidocaine spray to tongue and oropharynx, 2% lidocaine to larynx above and below the vocal cords. LA, usually lidocaine 4%, is introduced via the injector canal in the fiber optic endoscope under direct vision. Nerve blocks. The glossopharyngeal nerve may be blocked by applying 2 cc of 1% lidocaine at caudal part of tonsillar pillars. Superior laryngeal nerve can be blocked by bilateral injections of 3 cc 1% lidocaine by walking off the greater cornua of the hyoid to penetrate the tyrohyoid membrane or walking off the superior alley of the thyroid cartilage. The recurrent laryngeal nerve is usually blocked in a spray-as-you-go technique. It may be blocked via transtracheal injection through the cricothyroid membrane during inspiration. Puncture the cricothyroid membrane with a 22 or 23 gauge needle. Use a 10 cc syringe with 3 cc of 2% lidocaine. Aspirate air to confirm placement in the trachea. Patient to inspire deeply. At the end of inspiration, inject LA and remove the needle quickly to avoid injury to the posterior wall of the larynx. Alternatively, use an IV cannula to reduce the risk of posterior wall injury by removing the troca before injecting LA. The cough distributes the solution widely. Alternative is to use 4 ml of lidocaine 4%. Disadvantages include patient discomfort, especially in a patient who has already airway compromise. Multiple blocks are needed. Expertise in unusually performed blocks is required. Additional information. This is the difficult airway society awake tracheal intubation technique, which consists of oxygenation, 
topicalization, sedation, and performance of the procedure. Oxygenate. Apply high flow nasal cannula early for oxygenation. Hydrate flow from 30 to 70 liters per minute. Continue high flow nasal oxygenation throughout the procedure. Topicalization. Lidocaine 10% spray to the oropharynx, tonsillar pillars, and base of the tongue. 20 to 30 sprays during inspiration over 5 minutes. If nasal root, use cofinalkane spray. Test topicalization atraumatically. If inadequate, reapply LA up to maximum doses. Further 5 sprays of lidocaine 10% to the tongue base. 2 mil lidocaine 2% times 3 spray above. At and below the vocal cords via epidural catheter or working channel of flexible bronchoscope or using a mucosal atomization device. This device enables atomization of particles to 30 to 100 microns in size. It has a malleable stylet of 360 degree flexibility to enable it to be adapted to the patient's anatomy, ensuring targeted delivery of medication. This is attached to a syringe to contain the medication. One spray of lidocaine 10% is equivalent to 10 mg of lidocaine. 2.5 mL of cofinalkane is equivalent to 125 mg of lidocaine and 12.5 mg of phenylephrine. Sedate if required with remifentanil TCI Minto model, effect site concentration target 1 to 3 nanograms per mL. If second anesthetist is present, consider adding midazolam. Perform a weak tracheal intubation. Select appropriate tracheal tube with the patient sitting up. Ensure the operator can readily see the patient's monitor, infusion pumps and video screen. Clear any secretions. For flexible bronchoscopy, the operator is positioned facing the patient. Consider bronchoscope airway if via oral route. Bevel should be facing posteriorly. For video laryngoscopy, operator is positioned behind the patient. Consider use of buji. Prior to induction of anesthesia, perform two-point check. C. What are the indications and contraindications for awake fiber optic intubation? Indications include previous difficult airway for intubation or face mask ventilation, Predicted difficult airway, such as poor dentition, limited mouth opening, which may be due to facial fractures, rheumatoid arthritis, dental abscesses, scleroderma, etc. Limited neck movement, which may be due to rheumatoid arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, previous cervical spine surgery or trauma. Airway anatomy abnormalities may lead to difficult airway, such as abnormal thyroid, tongue, tonsillar or laryngeal tumors, epiglottitis, Ludwig's angina, airway edema or burns, obesity, retronathia, and previous neck radiotherapy. Syndromes associated with difficult airway may be present, such as Pierre-Robin's or treacher collins syndrome. Another indication for awake fiber optic intubation is need for intubation but requirement to stay awake, such as need for neurological examination following intubation. Contraindications for awake fiber optic intubation includes patient refusal, non-compliant patient such as the confused or young age patient, local anesthetic allergy, operator inexperience, subglottic airway issue. If the predicted difficulty in airway is below the glottis, it won't be overcome by fiber optic intubation. Significant laryngeal stenosis, threat of airway obstruction, airway bleeding or risk of airway bleeding, for example, due to vascular tumor. D. List the complications of awake fiber optic intubation. These may be drug related or airway related. Drug related complications include failure to achieve adequate anesthesia of airway, leading to patient discomfort, local anesthetic toxicity. Nerve damage due to nerve blocks, apnea, loss of consciousness, and loss of airway due to sedation if used. Airway related complications include trauma to airway, airway obstruction due to fiber optic scope and tube, 
airway edema, bleeding or laryngospasm, failure to achieve securing the airway due to operator inexperience, patient non-compliance, or airway more problematic than anticipated, aspiration of blood from trauma of procedure or pre-existing bleeding, or aspiration of food contents due to full stomach with consequent lower respiratory tract infection or inflammation. Bronchospasm may occur.